Hilt with your lecture on energy. Please follow along with either your own notes or the lecture notes that are posted online with the student fill in. I also need a calculator because we'll have some calculations closer to the end. All right, so we already know about work and that a force needs to be applied, the object needs to be placed for work to be done. And the part that is kind of hard to get past is this one, that holding something over your head is, there's no work being done. Like what if that dumbbell or barbell weighs a thousand pounds? No work is being done? Like that just seems crazy. And it's true, no work is being done, but there is something else at play here. Okay. So what do you think this person must have in order to uh, hold, or, uh, lift up dumbbells or hold a dumbbell or barbell over their head? So you know, think about it. You can pause the video, press play when you're ready. Uh, but what this person needs is energy. We all need energy to do anything. Uh, but to do work or to not do work, you still need energy. And what energy is, is just the ability to do work. All right, so it, again, does not mean that work has already been done. It just could or have the potential of being done. And those are the two types of energy that we're going to look at. Kinetic, which is motion, and potential, which is potentially energy. So which type were we seeing here? Where they're moving up and down, kinetic energy. And where they're lifting the barbell just over their head, not moving it, that is potential energy. All right, so kinetic energy is first on our list. And this, again, is motion energy. And it depends on an object's mass as well as its velocity. And the kinetic energy and mass of an object, those have a direct relationship. Uh, the velocity, though, uh, this is squared, so it will quadruple. All right, first comparison. The blue car weighs one ton, traveling at 50 miles per hour. The truck weighs two tons and is traveling at the same speed of 50 miles per hour. So if the truck weighs twice as much, how much kinetic energy do you think this truck has compared to the blue car? Pause your video when you're ready for the answer. Press play. The truck has two times more kinetic energy as a blue car. So because it weighs twice as much and kinetic energy and mass have a direct relationship, double the mass, you double the kinetic energy. All right, now kinetic energy with relation to velocity. So now we have two cars, same mass, and the velocity is going to be double with this little race car that has the flames or the yellow flames on it. So I want you guys to think about how much more kinetic energy the race car has compared to the blue car. If you need to pause the video, go ahead. When you're ready, press play. All right, so the racing car has four times as much energy as the blue car. So because the velocity is squared, we are doubling something that is squared, it's four times as much. And that leads us into our equation. So kinetic energy, how we would actually calculate this is by taking the mass times the velocity squared, and that's actually multiplied by one half. All right, and then in the blue down here, we have a summary of the last slides. Doubling the mass doubles the Ke, doubling the velocity quadruples the kinetic energy. And we also have the units associated. So mass is in kilograms. That's consistent with what we've been using. Velocity, meters per second, again, consistent. And kinetic energy is in joules. So work and energy have the same unit of joules. All right, first example. A 0 0.10 kilogram bird is flying at a constant velocity of 0.8 meters per second. What is the bird's kinetic energy? And then we want to see what it is if the mass is tripled and if the velocity is multiplied by 5. Pause the video. Try this one out on your own. When you're ready for the answers and explanation, press play. All 
All right, so first thing is to solve for the bird's kinetic energy, uh, the question that is highlighted in blue. And it's pretty straightforward using the equation that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times the mass, which is 0 0.10 kg, multiplied by the acceleration, which is 0.8 meters per second, and, oh, if I said acceleration, I meant velocity. Sorry about that. And then that is squared. When you guys are typing this into your calculator, make sure that you are applying the square only to the velocity. Okay? The velocity is the only thing that gets squared. The mass does not. Okay? So after you plug this in, you get a kinetic energy of... 0 0.032 joules. All right, now let's move on to the orange. So everything will be very similar, except we are tripling the mass. So we can either plug in 3 times 0 0.1 or just type uh, 0.3 in. Times three times zero point one. All right. So after you plug that in, you will get a kinetic energy of zero point zero nine six joules. Okay, so after the first two problems, we can see that uh, the energy triples if the mass triples. Let me move that one to the side so we have room for the green one. All right, and last but not least, uh, what if we multiplied the mass by or the velocity by five? So again, set everything up the same way that we have been. And the velocity will be multiplied by 5. And when you guys are plugging this into your calculators, make sure to complete this part, 5 times 0.8, then square it. All right. And again, the velocity is the only thing that gets squared. And what you would get after plugging this in is 0.8. 8 joules. Okay. So I know that the velocity was multiplied by a higher quantity than the mass, but it is pretty obvious that by increasing the velocity, the kinetic energy has a much bigger reaction to that, or the more the velocity is increased, much higher energy versus if you increase the mass, it doesn't go up as much. So first thing is to solve for the bird. All right, let's try one more out. So a 50 kilogram cheetah has a kinetic energy of 18,000 joules. How fast is the cheetah running? Pause the video, try this calculation on your own. When you're ready for the answer and explanation, press play. Okay, so in this problem, we are not solving for kinetic energy. Uh, we are given the kinetic energy, but we will be solving for velocity. We want to know how fast the cheetah is running. So how you do this, you can either plug the values in, then solve for the variable, or you can rearrange the equation uh, so that V is all by itself. Then plug everything in. We are going to plug everything in and solve for V. 1,000 joules is equal to 1 half times 50 kg. 
times the velocity squared. All right, so first thing that we need to do, or first thing that I'm going to do, is multiply the 50 times the 1 half, or 50 divided by 2. That gets us 25. We have 100 joules is equal to 25 kg times the velocity squared. Now, how I get, then parentheses, since there's a lot of letters right there. Now, how do we get velocity by itself? We have to divide each side by 25 kilograms. All right. So that gets us 720 joules per kilogram is equal to velocity squared. We'll work on the units later. Now, we don't have velocity yet because of that squared. So just like with uh, solving for C in the Pythagorean theorem, once you get to the end, square root both sides. And your velocity will be equal to about 26.8 meters per second is the velocity. Okay, it seems a little weird that we went right from joules into, or joules per kilogram into meters per second squared. But let's dissect those units a little bit. So remember that a joule is equivalent to a Newton meter, right? And a Newton is kilogram times meters per second squared. And then we still have to bring down that other m, which would be squared. Okay, so in the problem, when we divide by divide by kilograms right here, what is being canceled out is that kilogram. And then when we square root on both sides, that is how we get rid of the square and the square leaving us with just meters per second. All right, now for potential energy. So potential energy is stored energy, and it can be stored in a variety of ways. So anything from how the person was holding a dumbbell over their head to chemical energy that is stored within bonds. And how we calculate kinetic or potential energy is different than kinetic. Uh, we have the we have to consider the mass still in acceleration, but due to gravity, and then the height that the object is at. Uh, so all of the units, mass and kilograms, g is gravity, and it, the the acceleration rate of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and height is um, in meters. So let's try an example with this. A diver is standing at the top of a 10.0 meter platform and has a mass of 50 kilograms. What is her potential energy? Try solving this one out on your own. When you are ready for the answer and explanation, press play. All right, solving for potential energy. Uh, this one is straightforward, where we are just solving for potential. So PE is equal to the mass, which is 50 kilograms times the uh, gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared and the squared is part of the units because gravity is an acceleration you are not going to be timesing nine point or you're not going to be squaring 9.8 in your calculation then uh, the height which is 10 meters all right plug 50 times 9.8 times 10 into a calculator and you will get a potential energy of 4,900 joules. All 
All right, so there is one other way that you can do calculations with uh, potential energy, and it's really the same, and you can think of it as one step already done for you. Uh, this is the equation that you'll use. Potential energy is equal to force times the height. Uh, so remember how we calculated force is mass times acceleration? So we're already like knocking off the mass times gravity uh, calculation, and then just taking that force and multiplying it by the height. Of course, we have an example calculation for you guys to try out. A skier is standing at the top of a 32 meter high uh, run. If the skier weighs 15 newtons, what is the skier's potential energy? Pause the video, calculate it. When you're ready for the answer and explanation, press play. All right, the next way of calculating potential energy is with force times height. So you can almost think of this as the problem did one step for you by already multiplying the gravity or acceleration times mass. So all you have to do is take the force, 15 newtons, and multiply it by 32 meters. And what you get is a potential energy of 480 joules. All right, so there are, or there is another form of potential energy, and that is elastic potential. And this has to do when things are compressed or stretched. Uh, you guys don't need to know about this because it has its own uh, formula as well as its own law behind it even. Uh, we are not going to get into this in this class, but I do want you to know that it just exists. Okay, so the forms of energy that we'll be talking about in here are thermal, chemical, electrical, electromagnetic, and nuclear. And how those are broken down, types of potential, types of kinetic. All right, you guys will get practice with identifying those different types on a worksheet that will be assigned very soon. All right, and the summary questions, the answers weren't supposed to pop up right away. Uh, if you had a chance to pause the video and answer those out on your own, that was ideal. Um, but one thing I wanted to make sure to squeeze in is a challenge question. Uh, so this question can earn you either participation points, or if you have already earned those for this week, I will award you some extra credit. Uh, I don't need to read the problem to you. I'll let you guys uh, do that on your own. There will be some extra conversions that you'll need to do in order to solve this. Uh, but again, just a challenge question. You do not need to complete this. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please check Google Classroom for your assignment.